was coming. So it was like, this is a piece of me that I cannot have and I cannot be with, but I still want to have some hopefulness for it, but I can't even be with the hopefulness. Like, that that's too, too much to bear. It's like too much to bear being with this piece and too much to bear the thought of being hopeful around healing this piece. But maybe it'll heal. Maybe, maybe. Like, I it's just very yeah. split off sort of way, but that there was some ho I, hopefulness in the necessary splitting off. Yeah, because I'm struck with the, she's still in the room watching a cold ambulance drive away. Believe that that little girl who's trying to break the door down is gone. But she's in that room looking at the window. Her, her mother's, mother's room. room. Her mother's room. I mean, and we know that all people parts of the dream herself, but she didn't go anywhere. She's still in her mother's room. She's in her mother. She locked herself in her mother's room. Yeah, I wonder. I, I see it as her splitting under the And Aligning with the mom, and the relief is they've taken the family car away, and she's like, "Deal with them." That's right. Well, we'll just so <laughs> let you know what this is. This is the dream of a 24-year-old. Um, this person is a psychotherapist, but at talking about his experience of uh, this is the dream he had the first night he took testosterone, mm -hmm. the beginning of his transition. To become, yeah. um, and he, at right, right. Uh, so, uh, you're beginning, maybe. Well, for him, yeah. But at what price? You know. I, in other words, I, you know, I, I think this is a, in lesbian psyche. I, you know, I see this, you know, this, this, this dream, I like, I, I read it and it like, I was enraged. I was like, because it says at the end, like, uh, uh, the meaning of the dream seemed obvious. That's all he says. And it's like, well, depending on your perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it was obvious to him. But from, from my point of view, it was like, I, I felt like I was enraged, like, like, here's this, little girl part of himself trying to like make contact and get <coughs> yeah. attention yeah. And, and he's afraid of her. Mm -hmm. His his relationship to, to his feminine is really problematic. She's scary. And she's just a little girl. Um, <coughs> and he's locked himself in his mother's room. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it, from my point of view, you know, this it's unfair because he's not here to kind of defend himself. So you know, but I, I, you know, from my point of view, it, it says what I'm saying here, what I was saying earlier, that this struggle, because he was a lesbian, he, you know, he's attracted to women. When, when he was a girl, he was a lesbian. And, uh, and it was intolerable. But, you, you know, I think you're right to say this was intolerable, intolerable, intolerable. His relationship to his feminine girl self in this, you know, like how she was embodied or forced to be embodied or something. Um, is something he's terrified of. And um, it seems to me that before somebody transitions uh, and takes the step of taking testosterone and becoming a man, well, even if you're a man, you still have a feminine side that you have to have a relationship with and that you have to, you have to, you have to, have, you have to cultivate and have some kind of relatedness yeah. to. And to, so, okay, I'm just going to become a man and, 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 and make my love objects be, only my love objects will be the feminine, will carry that. And I'm just going to carry the masculine. And it's like, that's the resolution mm -hmm. to the problem. That's different than your resolution, Jordan. You got in the ice cream truck and you got in the ambulance yeah. with your terror yeah. and with, with your craziness. And you, you know, that's a, that's a gay way. That's the gay solution. Solution, meaning I'm going to struggle with this horror. But I think, you know, it's really important as a clinician to that you could feel into how horrifying this struggle can be internally, and to be, you need to be able to sit with that with your client. 
Because the client's going to say, I'm a guy. And I don't want to feel this. And what's your ethical obligation there? What's your ethical obligation as a clinician? There. Do you just bow to that? Do you bow to the horror of the trauma of being a completely disembodied uh, lesbian child? Uh, do you explore it? What, how do you hold that level of, of, uh, of trauma? Um, and, uh, uh, and that understand the allegiance with the the ferocity of the allegiance with the mother and how the feminine which would be his double that little girl would be her if she had been able to struggle and stay in her female body would be her double and if she'd been able to stay and struggle with that little girl internally and you know we know when we have uh, parts of the psyche that are terrifying that they just get more and more terrifying unless we face them and try to make a relationship with them. That, that's just a fact of the psyche. They just get bigger and bigger and worse and worse and more horrifying. And uh, if we face them, and as therapists we help our clients to, if we're not scared of those scary places, then we can help them to not be scared. It's like, well, let's feel into this. You know, let's, what is it with this little girl? Uh, what's your feeling about her? Wow, she really seems to want to make contact with you. What's that now? <laughs> What's your... Really big effort. <laughs> She's going to be really hard yeah. to get, you know, get his attention. And she's such a numinous so figure, sad. like sunbeam girl. Sunbeam. Yeah. Like strawberry. Sunbeam bread. Like, just, I, it's, it's, it's vibrant. Yeah, it's archetypal. Yeah. She's this, you know, sun, like she's the sunbeam bread girl, which reminds me of a dream I had after I... I uh, gave the first lesbian workshop at Antioch, and I dreamed about this beautiful feminine woman who was baking me loaves and loaves of bread with pink frosting. <laughs> and writing me love poems. And, I mean, I couldn't handle it at all. <laughs> Needless to say. Sunbeam girl is busy, huh? Sunbeam bread girl. But she's a, yeah, it's like, wow, don't you want to get to know this? I mean, whether you're a boy or a girl, like, let's find out who she is and what her story is. Why are you hiding in your mother's bedroom? That's a problem. And what kind of heterosexual man is he going to be if he's barricaded himself inside mom, mommy's bedroom, too? Well, he will have good company. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there is a delusion that because I have a penis, and then I go through the edible stage, and I desire mommy, I'm now separate. No, I don't think so. And I, this sort of exposes that. In a, in a lesbian-centered or gay-centered psychotherapy, that dream might be the very center of the whole therapy. Right. Mm -hmm. The key to the whole psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely, because there's the double, there she is. How do we shift this relationship from one of terror and allegiance with the mother to, you know, wanting to know about this beautiful little girl that I that I was. He says I was, and you know, and when I and I was, I said I was like I was enraged. I was so upset and mad about this. And and then I realized as I was like about a week ago as I was preparing for this talk, it's like, oh, I have a, I do that to my. I had had a dream, a, a non of years ago when I first started doing this work about a, a I, 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 I did something very heroic in the outer world and stood up to some uh, icky people. And uh, it was terrifying for me. I was so scared. Um, and uh, that night I dreamed that I found this little girl, like a sunbeam red girl, uh, uh, drowned at the bottom of a swimming pool. And, um, and, I, and I, I, I knew her mother had done it to her. And I fished her up out of the pool, and then I went away. It's like I couldn't stay with her horror and her story and what she needed and, what, and the terrible suffering 
that's I think here in the stream. But it it this it's just uh, and her potential. Mm -hmm. And her potential. And right, and I just as I was saying that I'm like Sandra, like okay, that's just one side of the story. <laughs> You know, this, you know, that my trauma kids can get really caught in. It's like, that's all there is, is suffering and terror and horror. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if one has one's back to it, it really is like that. Uh, but if one turns and faces this little girl and, like, you know, we were to draw her and maybe do some research on the Internet and get pictures of that icon and blow it up really big and put it on the wall, make an altar to her, uh, engage in some active imagination where you're dialoguing with her. Um, some whole new possibilities could open up. Um, and, uh, and would open up. And they're not just could. So, you know, this is like, you know, that's a really drastic thing to throw away your female body. Your lesbian body. You know, he threw away his lesbian body. It's like, well, the lesbian body is a gift. You know, the, the, the antidote to this problem of heteronormativity is this cultivation in women of the relationship with the sister lover. So, so that the, if, if, if that woman chooses to bear children, she does it from that location. So she's cultivating that in her daughter. That it's not the imperative. It's just, you know, one possibility among many, many, many possibilities of what being in a female body can be about. And lesbians and lesbian love has been the, you know, really, uh, I think it's the, uh, this relationship with the double, charged with arrows, has really been the avatar of new frontiers for human consciousness. Like I said, Sappho and Susan B. Anthony, who you know, was a, had women lovers, and uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, who basically is responsible for the New Deal, even if she doesn't get credit for it. And, and, you had a, and the UN Charter. The UN Charter, uh, yeah, and she had a, uh, you know, she had a whole circle of lesbian friends. She, she owned a place in the Catskills with a lesbian couple, and they had, and they had a furniture workshop they did together, and they, they had, and the initials of all three of them carved into all the everything that they had there, and, um, um, and her lover Lorena Hickok, you know, like destroyed, and but this is, it's, it's like a, yes. related to this, destroyed. Hundreds and hundreds of uh, Eleanor's uh, letters, love letters, uh, to protect her. Right. So you know, we how we do it to ourselves. This is the worst. This is how we do it to ourselves. And as clinicians, um, uh, it's so important to uh, in, run interference on that in an in a, in a aggressive way, I think, or in an empathic way uh, that really advocates for lesbian love, the love of the feminine, the love of the sun being bread girl, that has been, you know, kind of exploited by the culture with, you know, sex symbols, this, that, you know, exploited by the but it's like, it's, a, it's just an exploitation of something that is very real. Um, and has enormous power I you know I've been I've had this radiation in me radi I've been radiated to within an inch of my life <laughs> last month and I was sitting you know and sitting within an I have was having an experience where actually despite all of that and my incredible fatigue there was this lying arrows like woke up and was really attracted to somebody mm -hmm. and it was like, so it was so much more radioactive <laughs> than anything that had been done to me. Like what had been done to me couldn't touch it. So this is, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know, I, I want to say plea, but 
that that's too submissive. Uh, 